Okay. Do you want to be on the mic? Does that work? It's fine. Good to go? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Coulter Field and Bishops University. We're pleased to host you on this historical day as we prepare for the total solar eclipse. Uh, our days include interviews with scientific experts. The partial eclipse will start at 2.16 and total eclipse will be at 3.26 p.m. Bienvenue sur le terrain Coulter de l'Université Bishops. En préparation pour l'éclipse solaire totale, nous sommes heureux de vous accueillir à cette journée historique. Notre journée comprendra des entrevues avec des experts scientifiques. L'éclipse partielle débutera à 14h16 et l'éclipse totale à 15h26. We have a few safety reminders for you guys. It is suggested to wear the eclipse glasses at all times. If you do not have a pair, please stop by the purple tent in the parking lot. As well, refrain from eating while on Coulter Field, that is the synthetic surface. Eating in the parking lot is permitted. There is no smoking within the Coulter Field or parking lot premises. A dedicated smoking area has been set up next to the parking lot. No pets are allowed inside of Coulter Field. A first aid station is available under the sports center overhang located next to the main parking lot area. There are bathrooms and water refill stations located all around campus. And please help make sure this event is sustainable. Use the, market, the marked garbages, recycling, and compost bins located around the field and the parking lot. It is not recommended you take pictures of the eclipse without special lenses. This includes with your phone. Nous avons quelques rappels de sécurité pour vous. Il est suggéré de porter vos des lunettes éclipse à tout moment. Si vous en avez pas, une paire arrêtez vous à la tente mauve dans le stationnement. Veuillez vous abstenir de manger sur la surface synthétique du terrain Coulter. Il est permis de manger dans le stationnement seulement. Il est aussi interdit de fumer sur le terrain et dans le stationnement. Un espace de fumeur est dédié à être aménagé à côté du parking. Les animaux sont interdits sur le terrain. Seuls les animaux de soutien sont autorisés. Une tente de premier soin est disponible sous le surplomb du centre sportif situé à côté du stationnement principal. Il y a des stations de remplissage d'eau et des toilettes situées tout autour du campus. S'il vous, vous plaît, aidez-nous à rendre cet événement durable. Utilisez les bacs à déchets de recyclage et de compostable, co compostage identifiés situés autour du terrain coulter et dans le stationnement. Il n'est pas recommandé de prendre des photos de l'éclipse sans objectifs spéciaux. Cela inclut avec votre téléphone. Merci, thank you, and have a good day.
Let us take a moment to acknowledge and recognize that we are gathered on the traditional and unceded land of the Abenaki people. Prenons un moment pour reconnaître que nous sommes sur les territoires traditionnels et non cédés du peuple Abenaki. The land of the Abenaki extends across most of what is today New England, Southern Quebec, and a portion of the Maritimes. The Bishop's Campus is located at the confluence of the Massawippi and St. Francis Rivers, significant waterways of the Abenaki people for centuries. We honor the Abenaki's rich history and culture and pay our respects to them as the original stewards of the territory on which we gather. While you enjoy the 2024 total solar eclipse, be sure to stop by the academic uh, tables in the parking lot to learn more about the event and Bishop's University. A kids area is also provided in the parking lot. Hungry? Thirsty? Stop by the food trucks located in the parking lot. There is also a Tim Hortons located in the sports center. Dewar's Dining Hall, the Purple Pod, and the Learning Lib Learn Library Learning Commons Cafe open for dining needs. A reminder, please refrain from eating on Coulter Field synthetic surface. And you love the beautiful campus you are on today? Stop by and learn more about it by seeing the recruitment team in the parking lot today. Looking to take home a piece of Bishop's uh, with you? The Gators Boutique, located in the Sports Center, is now open until 5 p.m. Pendant que vous profitez de l'éclipse solaire totale, n'oubliez pas de vous arrêter aux tables de stationnement pour pouvoir en savoir sur l'événement sur l'Université de Bishop's. Un espace pour les enfants est disponible dans le stationnement. Vous avez une fringale? Arrêtez-vous au camion buffet situé dans le stationnement. Il est aussi un restaurant Tim Hortons situé dans le complexe sportif, la salle de manger Doers, le Purple Pod et la librairie Learning Commons Café ouvert pour vous besoin en matière de restauration. En appel, veuillez vous abstenir de manger sur la surface synthétique Coulterfield. Vous aimez le magnifique campus sur lequel vous vous trouvez aujourd'hui? Passez-nous voir et apprenez en davantage en visitant l'équipe de recrutement dans le stationnement dès aujourd'hui. Vous souhaitez repartir avec un souvenir de Bishops avec vous? La boutique Gators, située au centre sportif, est ouverte dès maintenant jusqu'à 5 heures. Yeah. Is that it?
here uh, in Lennoxville. And uh, we, the temperature is about 14 Celsius and it's uh, crystal clear. As a matter of fact, last night uh, might have been All right, ladies and gentlemen. a photometric night. In other words, uh, uh, where the skies are really uh, crystal clear, we might get about five of those in an entire year. So uh, we are truly blessed with the uh, weather that we have today. Um, in fact, we had a big snowstorm here at the end of last week. It was even uh, snowing and raining a bit on Saturday. But as you can see uh, on the camera feed, uh, the uh, the fields are bare and uh, yeah and uh, uh, people are able to walk around so that the, the snow cleared at just uh, the right time because we got about 25 centimeters so that's a lot um, yeah <laughs> but it's all pretty much all gone um, so as you said we have hundreds and hundreds of people here already uh, we expect to have uh, in the thousands. Uh, by the time totality uh, is reached. And um, a lot of people are using our solar telescopes to view the eclipse. We have many of those in the parking lot area. And so in fact, I think there's some, line, uh, some uh, lineups there. Um, yeah, uh, at the far end near the uh, gym building is where the telescopes are. So there are some lineups for sure. But we have a lot of pinhole cameras as well that people are using. And as well, a lot of aficionados of astronomy have been bringing their own pinhole cameras and even uh, some telescopes. And there are people as far away as from uh, Florida and Nevada, we see, in, in terms of the license plates in the parking lot. So, uh, so it's turning out to be a pretty big success. In fact, I guess the eclipse has just started here. I don't know if we can cut away to our uh, solar eclipse camera or not. Uh, do we have any feed on that? No, we don't, not at the moment, but we'll try to, to uh, get that to, to you. But they're having a little bit of technical issues with that. Um, and um, uh, we'll, we'll get a chance to look at the sun just before totality. But in fact, um, we're really in a prime location here because we're only 15 kilometers away from the uh, center of the path of totality. Um, <clears throat> Now, the, the sun, of course, has a lot of sunspots on it, and uh, that's one of the things that makes this uh, eclipse uh, rather exceptional. So we're entering the, uh, the period of solar maximum, and uh, we'll hopefully be able to give you some images of those sunspots and the partial eclipse as time progresses. So uh, I'll pass it back to you, Alana.
As the excitement ramps up here, it is suggested to wear Eclipse glasses at all times. If you do not have a pair, stop by the purple tent in the parking lot. A first aid station is available under the sports center overhang located next to the main parking lot area. As well, please help us make this event sustainable. Use the marked garbages, recycling, and compost bins located around Coulter Field in the parking lot. It is not recommended you take pictures of the Eclipse without special lenses. This includes your phone. Il est suggéré de porter des lunettes Eclipse à tout moment. Si vous n'en avez pas, d'une part, arrêtez-vous à la tente mauve dans le stationnement. Une tente de premier soin est disponible sous le surplomb du centre sportif situé à côté du stationnement principal. S'il vous plaît, aidez-nous à rendre cet événement durable. Utilisez les bacs déchets, recyclage et de compostage, compostage identifiés situés autour du terrain Coulter et dans le stationnement. Il n'est pas recommandé de prendre des photos de l'éclipse sans objectifs spéciaux. Cela inclut avec votre téléphone. While you do enjoy the total solar eclipse, you can also stop by the tables in the parking lot to learn more about the event and Bishop's University. A kids area is available on the field behind Coulter Field Stadium. Are you hungry? Thirsty? Well, you could stop by the food truck located in the parking lot. There's also a Tim Hortons located in the sports center. Dewar's Dining Hall, the Purple Pod, and the Library Learning Commons Cafe is open for your dining needs. A reminder, please refrain from eating on Coulter Field synthetic surface. Love the beautiful campus you are on today? Stop by and learn more about it by seeing the recruitment team in the parking lot today. Looking to take home a piece of Bishop's with you? The Gators Boutique, located in the Sports Center, is open now until 5 p.m. Pendant que vous profitez de l'éclipse solaire totale, n'oubliez pas de vous arrêter aux tables de stationnement dans le stationnement pour en savoir plus sur l'événement et sur l'Université de Bishop's. Un espace pour enfants est disponible dans le stationnement. Vous avez une fringale? Arrêtez-vous au camion de bouffet situé dans le stationnement. Il y a aussi un restaurant Tim Hortons situé dans le centre sportif, la salle de manger Dewurst, le Purple Pod et le Library Learning Commons Café, ouvert pour vos besoins en matière de restauration. Un rappel, veillez-vous d'abstenir de manger sur la surface synthétique Coulterfield. Vous aimez le magnifique campus sur lequel vous vous trouvez aujourd'hui? Passez-nous vous... Passez-nous voir et apprenez en davantage en visitant l'équipe de recrutement dans le stationnement dès aujourd'hui. Vous souhaitez de repartir avec un souvenir de Bishops avec vous? La boutique Gators, située dans les, au centre sportif, est ouverte dès maintenant jusqu'à 5 heures.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as we move closer to the totality, we'd like to welcome our first interviewee, Dr. John Ron, Associate Professor and Canada Research Chair in Multi-Messenger Astrophysics, to speak about what we are witnessing today. Comme la totalité approche, nous accueillons le professeur John Ron, professeur agrégé et titulaire de la chaire de recherche du Canada et d'astrophysique multimessager pour nous parler de l'expérience unique que vous allons vivre aujourd'hui. How are you doing today, Mr. Ron? Excellent. N nice to be here. So, uh, what can you give us a little insight on what an eclipse is and what is happening right now if we look up towards the sun? Yeah, so if, uh, if you look up towards the sun right now, you're seeing the sun is partially being covered by the, uh, uh, by the moon. Um, an eclipse occurs when the moon moves between the Earth and the sun, and thus it casts a shadow on the Earth, right? And um, this shadow will move across the Earth, and um, when we go into totality in about an hour from now, uh, 45 minutes or so, um, we will be entirely in that shadow, and the sun will be completely blocked by the moon. And so why would today be special being a total eclipse compared to like a partial eclipse as we've had in a couple of years past? Yeah, so total solar eclipses are actually extremely rare. Um, at in any one particular place, they occur once every almost like 400 years or so. Um, and so it's uh, very rare that we're actually in the path of totality and we actually get to see the uh, sun get entirely covered. Um, and and the total solar eclipse is a completely different experience than a partial eclipse. It is much more spectacular. Um, and so uh, it, we're, it, this is a really special and unique place to be. Are there any dangers uh, in which we can have uh, from a total solar eclipse if we look up without the glasses that we have on? Uh, yeah, so there is risk of eye damage if you don't properly um, use your eclipse glasses. So uh, when you look at the sun at any time except totality, you should always use um, your eclipse glasses. Never stare at the sun um, without them. Um, however, during the brief three and a half minutes of totality, you can actually take off your glasses and you can actually see the sun's corona, which is um, the sort of the atmosphere of the sun. Um, and if you look around um, on the horizon, you'll be able to see a 360 degree sunrise, uh, which you would never otherwise see. And so what type of research have you uh, maybe done here on eclipses at bishops and everything? Yeah, so I don't personally work on eclipses, but there's been a lot of uh, really important scientific um, developments that came out of an eclipse, right? So um, w one example is that uh, Einstein's theory of general relativity was essentially proven by observations of an eclipse. So in Einstein's theory of general relativity, um, uh, that posits that gravity is actually due to the curvature of space-time around mass. Um, and we can prove this by looking at stars around the sun during an eclipse. So because light from those stars are actually bent as they travel to us around the sun, um, when we look at the positions of those stars, they actually move. They actually appear to move. However, you wouldn't normally be able to see those stars, but during, during a total solar eclipse, because the sun's light is blocked, you can actually see those stars. And it was in the tw uh, 1920s, I believe, uh, Arthur Eddington observed a total solar eclipse, measured the positions of those stars around the sun, and proved that, yes, space-time is curved. And so you did mention that it's an extremely rare thing to have a total solar eclipse. When is the next one that we're supposed to have in this region? Yeah, so I, I believe the next one in Quebec is in 2106. So something like 80 years from now, um, we'll probably not be around for that. So and, but however, um, if you're really intrigued by today's total solar eclipse, um, a lot of people after they see their first one, they start to go eclipse chasing because they realize um, uh, how cool this is. And so they travel around and chase total solar eclipses. Amazing. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, nous vous remercions, Mr. Ron, et merci pour votre travail dans cette domaine.
as we continue here on Coulter Field, uh, please remember to use your glasses, uh, s'il vous plaît, continuez de mettre vos lunettes. Uh, now, uh, we wish to invite Dr. Lauren Nelson, full professor in uh, physics and astro astronomy at Bishop's University, to further discuss what we're experiencing today. Nous invitons maintenant Lauren Nelson, professeur du département de physique et d'astronomie, pour poursuivre la discussion au sujet de l'événement unique qui se déroule aujourd'hui. Mr. Nelson, what are we seeing right now? Well, first off, it's a beautiful, glorious day, right? Incredibly clear. And uh, we are uh, looking at the uh, partial eclipse right now. Approximately one half of the surface of the sun is being eclipsed by the moon. And so that will continue until totality is reached around 326 uh, this afternoon. So let's hope that the clouds stay away and that we continue to be able to watch a beautiful eclipse. And uh, could you maybe give us a little insight on the history of eclipses? Sure. Eclipses have been occurring for hundreds of millions of years. And the first person to actually predict an eclipse was a Greek natural philosopher named Thales. And that was in 585 BCE. And according to the historical records, uh, the kingdoms of Medes and Lydia were fighting a prolonged war. And when the full eclipse happened, they uh, thought that this pretended evil things, and they laid down their arms and ended uh, uh, with a peaceful treaty. Uh, at least, I hope that's correct. Uh, it might be apocryphal. But anyway, that's what happened. Um, and so Thales showed that really eclipses were not a message from the gods uh, that people should be concerned about, but rather that it was possible to determine rationally uh, and predict uh, the times of eclipses. So it was a tremendous advance. And really, it was a turning point in science because uh, it, it was the triumph of rationality over superstition and ignorance. And that's why we do science, to, to basically try to uh, wipe out superstitions, to explain all natural phenomena. Now, uh, I'll just continue on here. Uh, his prediction was not very accurate in the sense that he could not predict it down to the nearest second, which is what we can do these days. So it's in, uh, pretty incredible uh, how far we have come. Uh, in 1836, uh, a f uh, an astronomer named Bailey gave us the explanation for Bailey's beads. So when totality occurs at 326, just before it occurs, the rim of the, or the circumference of the moon will pass just uh, at the edge of the sun, and uh, we will see little sparkles of light. These are called Bailey's beads or Bailey's diamonds. And basically, it's due to sunlight that is passing through the craters and valleys on the surface of the moon. So it very much depends on the roughness of the topography of the moon. Um, in uh, 1868, uh, we were able to discover a whole new element, na namely helium, in the corona of the sun. And so that corona is a halo that you can see when we reach totality. So people will be able to see that when we reach totality. Um, and, and helium actually derives from the Greek word helios, which means sun. And, and then uh, in 1919, there was a famous expedition that showed that starlight is bent around massive objects and in accordance with Einstein's theory of general relativity, which is basically a theory of gravity. So it was a tremendous triumph for Einstein and his ideas. And so uh, now a little bit about what Bishops has done uh, to astronomy. Could you uh, maybe touch on the contributions that Bishops University has had? Yeah, over the last few decades, uh, we've made a significant number of discoveries. And the evidence for this is the fact that uh, our papers, where we publish the results, have been cited uh, much more than 10,000 times by other scientists. In other words, they have referred to our work. So uh, we have several 
uh, members of the department who are very active in different areas. Uh, for example, uh, Professor Jason Rowe is discovering exoplanets. So these are planets orbiting other stars. So other stars are other than the sun are the hosts of these planets. Uh, Dr. Ron, you just heard from him, and uh, he is working on, he's made major contributions to our understanding of the merger of neutron stars and black holes. Uh, I have worked on something known as brown dwarfs, which are objects that are not quite stars, but they're not planets either. And so they're a whole new class of astronomical objects. And uh, then professors Valeria Froni and Ariel Edery have also made significant contributions uh, in the area of astrophysics. Thank you, Dr. Nelson, for your time. Uh, merci, Dr. Nelson, pour votre temps. We now welcome uh, Elodie Lescure. Uh, 
knowledge, uh, mobilization, and master student in astrophysics uh, with Dr. John Ron uh, to discuss some uh, of the initiatives that Bishops has been part of surrounding the solar eclipse. Uh, il nous fait plaisir de discuter maintenant avec Elodie Lescure, étudiante à la maîtresse en astrophysique, avec le professeur John Ron et étudiante en mobilisation des connaissances, des initiatives et des ateliers qu'elle or elle organisait en tant que représentante de Bishops en lien avec l'éclipse solaire. Donc, elle a dit, « Qu'est-ce qu ton rôle dans le département d'astronomie ici à Bishops? » Oui, donc c'est sûr que pri en priorité, mon rôle, c'est vraiment une étudiante à la maîtrise. Donc, je fais de la recherche à temps plein euh, avec euh, mon superviseur, euh, professeur John Ron. Puis aussi, comme je suis étudiante en mobilisation des connaissances, aussi ici à Bishop, euh, j'apprends à faire de la communication scientifique. Puis euh, j'ai été vraiment très impliquée là, dans, dans le développement de, de notre événement aujourd'hui. Donc, comme je disais juste avant, deux ans de travail qui terminent aujourd'hui. C'est vraiment très excitant d'être ici. So, uh, while you were here at Bishop's, could you give us some of your highlights, maybe, in the astronomy department? Yeah, of course. So, Research-wise, I have so many highlights because I'm really supported by the department and by the university in my, in my work. But for the Eclipse, of course, my highlight has to go with our regional collaboration that was funded by Preise. And we uh, train student ambassadors from bishops, but also from other higher education institutions. Uh, and we train them to go visit elementary and high schools to talk to them about the eclipse, what's going to happen today, and how to safely observe it. Y a-tu eu un moment dans ta vie qui t'a inspiré en astronomie pour en étudier? J'ai toujours été fascinée par euh, l'idée de grandeur des univers, d'essayer de comprendre intrinsèquement c'est quoi qui se passe, pourquoi nos lois de la nature sont comme elles sont. Donc, ça a été quand même assez naturel pour moi de poursuivre vers les sciences de la nature. Puis on, après ça, j'ai vraiment découvert euh, une passion pour la logique qu'il y a derrière la physique. Essayer de résoudre toutes ces énigmes-là. Donc, euh, ça a vraiment été naturel pour moi de continuer vers l'astronomie, vers l'astrophysique, parce que c'est tellement fascinant. Puis j'ai l'impression qu'on n'en saura jamais assez sur, euh, sur l'espace qui est autour de nous. And then, uh, finally, what can we, as the public, learn from an event like today? I think what is most important is that science is not only for scientists, especially not astronomy. This is something that can bring people together, and that is something that is am amazing, an amazing event to live all together. And you don't need to know every little detail to enjoy science, enjoy astronomy, and have a great time today. Thank you very much for joining us. Elle a dit merci beaucoup de nous avoir accompagnés.
Sorry, Yolanda. Yeah, I've been busy running around doing interviews and uh, talking to the crowd as well, and um, now I can spend a little bit of time with you. Oh, it's uh, fantastic. Uh, we have a little bit of distortion I see in the image, not sure what the reason is, but um, uh, we have actually two different uh, cameras set up. Uh, one is uh, for uh, basically a camera with a filter uh, attached to it, which I believe is the one that we're seeing right now. And then we also have our Lunt Solar Telescope, and you can see that we're having a little bit of problems with it. Um, uh, basically, the, the wind is quite strong and vibrations are a bit of a problem. We hadn't expected that, but we are basically on top of the stands in the Coulter football field. And uh, people are walking around, of course, uh, getting up and moving around in the stands. And this is causing vibration. But as well, we do have the wind issue. But yeah, we're getting close to totality. We've got, let's see, it's... Um, it's 3.13 right now. Our totality starts around uh, 3.26. So, uh, so we've got 13 more minutes before uh, we will indeed uh, be seeing the beads of Bailey, hopefully, and uh, then entering the period of totality. So we're noticing that it's actually getting quite a bit uh, dimmer outside. Uh, we've got probably three quarters of the surface area of the sun blocked, but maybe we have an image of the crowd. They're getting more excited, of course, as uh, time goes by. And uh, also, maybe if uh, you can remember how what that image looked like uh, when we first talked at uh, 2.15 this afternoon, that it was quite a bit brighter. So uh, anyway, we're, we're getting really excited about this. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so terribly sad in it to state that we have our final interview of the day, but don't worry, we saved the best for last uh, with Professor Jean-Louis Udzier. Professor Udzier is an internationally respected astronomer and author of Astro Astronomical Photography, Eclipses of the Moon and Sun, Book of Sky, Book of the Moon, and Astronomy for All. Welcome. Le professeur Jean-Louis Udzier est un astronome de renommée internationale et auteur de plusieurs ouvrages dont photographie astronomique, éclipse de la Lune et du Soleil, Livre du Ciel, Livre de la Lune, l'astronomie pour tout. Bienvenue, Monsieur Urdieu. Pourrais-tu nous dire qu'est-ce qui, qu qui se passe maintenant avec l'éclipse? Ben en ce moment, on approche de la totalité, la lumière a bien baissé, il commence à faire un peu plus frais, un peu de vent qui se lève, et dans quelques minutes, eh bien, il va faire nuit complètement. Et c'est cette phase qui inquiète les animaux qui vont commencer à se demander ce qui se passe parce que bientôt il fait nuit. Donc, qu'est-ce qu'on a de, qui est spécial aujourd'hui avec l'éclipse qu'on a? Ben, l'éclipse, ce qui est spécial, c'est qu'elle est totale ici, à Sherbrooke. Toutes les éclipses totales sont spéciales, mais il faut avoir la chance d'être à un endroit où il fait beau. Et on a la chance d'être à un endroit où il fait beau. Donc, on a un ciel dégagé et on va voir la nuit en plein jour. Et ça, c'est une grande surprise pour les hommes depuis toujours. Malheureusement, dans l'Antiquité, il y avait très peu de gens qui étaient à l'endroit précis. Là, il y a beaucoup de gens qui ont fait le voyage pour venir au bon endroit. 
Donc euh, maintenant, c'est devenu possible. Ça l'était complètement impossible il y a quelques siècles. Comment pourrait-on euh, le comparer aux éclipses qu'on a vues, genre, il y a une couple d'années? Ah ben, les éclipses sont incomparables, en fait. C'est toujours quelque chose de neuf. Parce que d'abord, il se passe des choses différentes sur le Soleil. Mais ça, maintenant, avec les techniques spatiales, on le sait très bien. Mais euh, à chaque endroit, l'éclipse est vécue différemment parce que les endroits sont tous différents. Donc, c'est toujours une nouvelle surprise. Y a-t-il euh, des changements dans les années précédentes euh, des éclipses? Non, il n'y a pas eu de changement majeur, mais chaque éclipse apporte des nouvelles informations. En fait, actuellement, ce qui est, les informations les plus importantes qui sont apportées par les éclipses nous renseignent sur la, la rotation de la Terre qui est un peu irrégulière. Et grâce aux éclipses, on arrive à mieux connaître les relations Soleil-Terre-Lune, donc la position de la Terre avec une très grande précision. Merci, Monsieur Dieu, de nous avoir accompagné ici dans le broadcast et tout le monde sur Coulter Field.
just looking at my watch to see the time. I couldn't see my watch. It's getting so dark. Um, so we have approximately one minute to go. Um, and we're hoping to be able to see the Beads of Bailey. The, um, uh, the crowd, of course, is super excited. I think we're going to have a countdown in about uh, 30 seconds. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be great. Uh, we have, as you saw, a couple of images. This is from our camera with the filter on it. And then we have the solar uh, telescope as well. And so you can see that we're getting very, very close to the, uh, the edge of the disk of the sun. And uh, we're starting to see, well, soon we'll just be able to see the uh, corona. So yeah, it's really, really uh, moving along quite fast now. Um, uh, so, again, people are super excited, and um, uh, there, I thought maybe there would be like an, an, an enthralled silence, but listen to people, I don't know if you can hear them, they're just shouting and yelling. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, just absolute pandemonium in the, uh, there we go. So, we're not quite in totality yet, but there's just a tremendous roar. Oh my God, yes, oh my God. <laughs> it's getting so dark here. I think the street lights have come on uh, behind us, or behind this, our location, over near the highway, and the uh, MC here is revving up the people, and so there was a countdown, and uh, now, of course, it is getting really quite dark. Um, and uh, people, of course, are taking pictures and so forth and selfies, whatever. Um, so it's, it's been great. Uh, if you don't mind, Alana, because I'm doing a couple of streams and also helping out with safety aspects, can I just step out for a while and uh, Scott, what Scott? Hi everyone, welcome to Totality. Uh, you'll notice a very bright looking type of star almost directly above us. That is actually the planet Jupiter. So there's Jupiter and if you look uh, down from the sun uh, at an angle of about 25 degrees above the horizon you're going to see Venus. So Venus is the other object that looks like a bright star. In fact, it's brighter than Jupiter, and uh, it's showing up as well. And I can see, or I thought I saw Mars. Mars is very, very close to the horizon, so it'll be very hard to see. But Mars and Saturn are both to the uh, right of uh, where Venus is, and very, very close to the horizon. Now, if you look in other directions, you'll be able to see some of the uh, uh, stars, uh, such as uh, Rigel and Capella and uh, Sirius. So, for example, I think I see Sirius off to the east, so that's in the sort of the other direction of, the, of where the sun is, uh, and it's getting brighter and brighter. So the totality will last for another uh, minute or thereabouts. Okay, thank you.
It is suggested uh, to put your glasses back on now as we prepare for the next phase of the eclipse. Veuillez remettre vos lunettes en préparation de la prochaine phase de l'éclipse. So once more, it is suggested to wear eclipse to glasses now at all times. If you do, well, if you do not have a pair, then uh, hopefully you did have a pair. <laughs> Um, there is a first aid station available under the sports center overhang located next to the main parking lot. Il est suggéré de porter des lunettes Eclipse à tout moment. Aussi, il euh, y a une tente de premier soin qui est disponible sous le surplomb du centre sportif situé à côté du stationnement principal. Furthermore, our sustainable development office is collecting and recycling Eclipse glasses. Please do not leave them on the field. Look for the bins marked used Eclipse glasses on your way out. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Coulter Field will remain open until 4.30 p.m. We wish you an excellent remainder of your day and hope you all have enjoyed your time at Bishops. Uh, for more information about Bishops University, be sure to follow us on social media by using at ubishops and check out our website at www.ubishops.ca. Once again, thank you for joining us today. And students, uh, good luck on your finals. Uh, Merci de nous avoir à être joints avec nous aujourd'hui. Coulterfield restera ouvert jusqu'à 14h euh, ou 16h30, excusez. Nous vous souhaitons une excellente fin de journée et espérons que vous avez apprécié votre séjour à Bishops. Pour plus d'informations sur l'Université de Bishops, assurez-vous de nous suivre sur les médias sociaux en utilisant « at you bishops » et consultez notre site web « at a » www.ubishops.ca Encore une fois, nous vous remercions de nous être avoir joints à nous aujourd'hui et nous vous invitons de retourner à la maison en toute sécurité.